Thank you, Lord Jesus. And let's turn to Psalms 45, if you will. I'm going to pick up where I left off Sunday. And for those of you that uh, have not been following, then you can, I think, Andrew, aren't they on YouTube? Yeah. Okay, so you can go there and pick up uh, the last Sunday morning message. But uh, just to say to you that tonight... Uh, what I'm going to say, I think, is uh, not revolutionary or not so much a revelation to those of you that have been uh, following my ministry for many, many years. But I think to a lot of people, this will be <clears throat> an astounding thing to them, because uh, I'm going to talk about where does our family belong in our walk with God, uh, and where does our husband, our wife, and our children, where are they supposed to be in that uh, lineup of things. Uh, so anyway, back to Psalms 45. This is the song of loves. This we're talking about intimacy with God. And uh, so I think we left it off where we explained what Cassia, Myrrh, and Allos meant. Okay, so all of thy garments, verse 8, <clears throat> smell of myrrh, aloes, and cassia, out of the ivory palaces whereby they have made thee glad. Now, that word for ivory is simply white, where it means a sharp point. And palaces is just the temples, the temple of the Lord. All right, so out of the pure places of God, it makes him glad. Glory to Jesus. All right, so let's pick it up then in the next verse. King's daughters were among thy honorable women. Upon thy right hand did stand the queen in gold of Ophir. All right. Now turn, if you will, to Song of Solomon, chapter 6, and I will show you something there. <clears throat> King's daughters were among thy honorable women. Let's see now. Hold on just one second. I think I have a Bible, right? All right. There are many names for the uh, people of God throughout the scriptures, apart from body of Christ. But in the Old Testament, they were referred to as virgins. And uh, so let's see here in Song of Solomon, chapter 6, verses 8 and 9. There are threescore queens and fourscore concubines and virgins without numbers. Hallelujah. Without number. And then in the next verse, look what he says. The daughters saw her and blessed her. Yea, the queens and concubines, they praised her. All right. So now what we see there are five levels of uh, different types of people. You have queens, concubines, virgins, daughters. But also, as he spoke in verse 9 particular, his dove his undefiled. Amen. So let's let's just look at these because all of these represent the king's daughters were among thy honorable women. Uh, <clears throat> all of these people are in a sense in a relationship with Jesus, but that all of them have a, a different and varying type of relationship. First, let's start with queens. And you might want to write this in your Bible next to it. Queens are people that have authority. They have uh, <clears throat> rulership within the kingdom of God. So they've achieved quite a bit. You remember in David's army in 2 Samuel 23, it talked about uh, the first three, the second three, and then the main ones. Uh, so it's like you have the chief three who are basically David's mighty men. Then you have the second three under that, and then the 37 rest of the, or 31, the rest of David's mighty men. Three levels and three, uh, and I would say that these queens represent the second level of threes there. Great men of God. These were the three men that did marvelous things, but yet, they did not, it says, attain yeah. unto the first three. Does that make sense now? All right. So you have 
the top three, the three mighty men, and then under that you have three other men that reached a great place, but they didn't attain to the first three. And then you have all of the other 31 mighty men. Those, you know, just to be a part of David's mighty men was a great thing, and it lifted you above just the regular army. Okay, but there are ranks within the kingdom of God, ranks within even the bride of Christ. Okay, so, but notice it says 60 queens. 60 is the number for pride. Ah, Maju, God bless you. It's been a long time since I've seen or heard from you. Bless you, dear sister. Glad you're tuning in. Uh, but, so, you would imagine that pride is keeping these queens from entering into fullness or entering into perfection or all that they could have in Jesus. All right. <clears throat> then you have, it says, four score concubines. Now, these are people that just kind of show up. Well, what is a concubine? A concubine is not married to the person. They're just, they used to be slaves or servants and uh, they were used for sexual purposes. Uh, and so they had intimacy with a man, but it wasn't their husband. So what does this say to us? What does a concubine mean then? A concubine is somebody who's in it for the, how shall we say, the uh, blessed times or they always show up at these meetings and you know you don't see them again for you know two years five years ten years then they show up and they're always there you know partaking of something and uh but yet never really marrying the lord jesus yeah so many people it's like the, the folk there in the book of Luke said, we've drank in your presence. We've eaten and drunk in your yeah, presence. Right. So many people have been in moves of God, in the mighty presence and manifest presence of God. There's yeah. no denying that. But are they married to him? Absolutely not. These are concubines who are in it just for whatever. But they always find a reason not to. To marry him. Yeah. Not to get any closer. That's right. <clears throat> now the virgins are just the name for all of the. Uh, how should we say it? The people that were in covenant with God. In the Old Testament. And then in the New Testament. Be Every Christian is a virgin. Alright. Uh, virgins are not. There's no way you can say that virgins are worldly people at all. Uh, they're virgins in the kingdom of God. They've been made virgins by his blood. Okay, so they're just part of the people in the body out of whom all of these uh, ranks come out of. Am I making sense yeah. now? Mm -hmm. Okay, yes. well, all right. So what are the daughters then? They are people that come into the things of God because of family members. They are people that don't really have a walk with God on their own, don't have a desire to walk with God, but as long as they're in that family or in that house, they will uh, <clears throat> go to church, pretend to have a walk with God, but get them out away from that family, and they stop working with Jesus. These are daughters. Okay? So, but then you have what he says there, and this is what we want to be. Verse 9, my dove, my undefiled, is but one. Amen. Glory to yes. God. Yes. She is the choice one of her, rather she's the only one of her mother. She is the choice one of her that bear her. All right. We want to be the choice one. We don't, we're not happy just to be part of the virgins. We're not happy to be a king's daughter. We don't want to be a queen. We certainly don't want to be a concubine. Right? Okay. Because they're, they're readily known. And you can see them. And how many times... You remember that lady, that, uh, Andrew, that came to uh, Narraway when Brother Dan was preaching there one Sunday and she said that she had been there 
10 years ago and had been in a meeting where I supposedly had a vision or an angel well, appeared the glory to me. Class. Yeah, the, she saw the glory cloud. Yeah, that was back in the day. Yeah, and, but I mean, that was 15 years and we never saw that woman again. Mm -hmm. yeah. So, But they're always there trying to pretend they're spiritual. These are super spiritual freaks, to be honest with you. They have no foundation. They just go from high to high. And when it's not high and they're, they're having to walk through dark times and heavy times, they, they vanish. These are what we call 90-day wonders. Uh, this old brother used to say, Brother Westmoreland, there he taught, you know, for 90 days they're prophesying in every meeting. Uh, don't worry about it, it's gone. Uh, and they're they're so excited, they're worshiping, and they're kind of condemning everybody else for not being free, not dancing and worshiping or prophesying. And then after 90 days, you never see them again. <laughs> 90 days, you wonder where they went. <laughs> Glory to God. So uh, let's not be any of these lesser ranks. And God doesn't put these ranks in there to make us compare with one another and all that, you know, but... I think, it, you know, you know where you are at tonight. Most of these uh, that I mentioned to you, except I say concubines and daughters, would be in the 30-fold. But in the 60-fold believers, you have those queens. And uh, who are the other ones I was mentioning? But anyway, uh, the bride is the one that goes in for the 100-fold, breaks into the third dimension. God doesn't want us judging and comparing ourselves he wants you tonight to get a revelation of where you're at Amen. and proceed yes. onward. That's right. The call of God is always yeah. telling us to either rise up, come up, get up, get off your, you know, your deathbed, get off of that bed and come up higher. See, God is always deep, is calling unto deep, yeah. always wanting us to go on. To go further in Him. Yeah, you, Isn't it interesting that the disciples, the Bible says uh, there in the Gospels, that they were, he, Jesus was a stone's throw from the three disciples. Remember He took Peter, James, and John, separated them from the rest of the disciples? Took them a little further. Mm -hmm. But then He went another stone's throw further. Think of this now. Many times in our life, what will keep us out or bring us in is just going a stone's throw further. How many times have I beat myself up for not continuing in the things of God or not continuing on this path that the Lord was leading me into if I would have just gone a stone's throw further? I would have been in. Glory to God. Don't let anyone or anything, no circum there's no circumstance of life that is worth losing your peace. There is no person, place, or thing that's worth losing that's right. that manifest presence. That's right. Because when all is said and done, that's right. and everything is gone, what are you going to have? See, all right. Well, uh, king's daughters were among thy honorable women. And uh, notice here, it says about this one here. She, upon thy right hand, did stand the queen in gold of Ophir. Now, I have to tell you that, uh, remember when <clears throat> James and John's mother, the sons of thunder, she went to Jesus and she said, I don't know where that passage is. See if you can find it for me, Andrew. Uh, she said, you know, can you do something for my uh, children? Can you give them something? Can they sit, you know, at your right or left hand? And Jesus said, that's not mine to give. Yeah, Matthew, 20. Matthew 20. Well, let's turn there. Matthew 20. And you might want to write that down right there in uh, Psalms 40. I'm surprised I don't have it in there. Matthew 20. Let's see here now. Okay. <clears throat> then came to him, verse 20, 
the mother of Zebedee's children with her sons, worshiping him and desiring a certain thing of him. And he said unto her, What do you want, or what wilt thou? She said to him, Grant or promise that these, my two sons, may sit the one on thy right hand and the other on the left in thy kingdom. But Jesus answered and said, You know not what you ask. Are you able to drink of the cup that I shall drink of and be baptized with the baptism that I am baptized with? They say unto him, as of course anybody would, trying to impress the Lord, we're able. And, and he said unto them, you shall indeed drink of my cup and be baptized with the baptism I'm baptized with. But to sit on my right hand and on my left is not mine to give, but it shall be given to them for whom it is prepared of my father. Yes. Well, who is it prepared? Now, notice, Jesus is what? All right, here's God the Father. Okay, Jesus is what? At the right hand of the Father. Mm -hmm. So who's at the left hand of Jesus? The Father. Mm -hmm. Amen. Somebody's going to be sitting at the right hand of Jesus. Mm -hmm. Okay, the Father, Jesus, and then the bride. Glory Amen. to God. Amen. At the right. God's going to give it to whom it's prepared for. Amen. This king, or rather this king's daughter, this queen rather, is at the right hand, which always speaks of power and deliverance and victory and majesty. There, We're going to be at the right hand of Jesus Amen. in the coming kingdom. Glory to God. Now see how if you just compare spiritual things with spiritual and compare scripture to scripture. She's sitting at the right hand of her husband. Who's her husband? Jesus. Amen. So the right hand is open and it's being prepared for people yeah. who give themselves. Yeah. Notice it says she's in gold of Ophir. This speaks of what? The divine character, the divine majesty of Jesus, of God rather. Yeah. Gold always speaks of divinity, the, God's character. Silver always speaks of redemption. Brass speaks of judgment. On and on and on. But you can find all that in my book about, uh, what is it called? Uh, the the deeper, truth, deeper Truth Dictionary. But... Uh, See, once you start searching the scriptures, there's no end to it. Amen. And, and now as you're getting these keys to understanding the names, numbers, objects, colors, and once you have all that, and when you read the scriptures, you can then begin to piece things together. So the queen in gold, the character of God, the divinity, listen to this, the divine, this is what I was trying to remember, the divine nature is what yes. gold represents. Hallelujah. Yes. Now, you forgive me. I'm getting a little old now. I'll be 66 in a couple of weeks. And so I've, I've, I've you know, just always said gold is the divine nature, but it wasn't coming to me at that moment. The divine nature of God. Every chamber Hallelujah. in our soul. Thank you, Jesus has been completely overtaken by the divine nature of God. And so once that's done, see, God lives in our spirit. Our spirit doesn't sin. He that's joined to the Lord is one spirit. Okay? All right? So your human spirit is where Jesus lives. It's perfect. It's great. It's finished. The work's done there. That's the past salvation. <clears throat> then you have your soulish man, which is completely what God is working on in these days. I promise you, there's something in your life going on right now that uh, God is preparing your soul to handle His divine nature. Amen. You're either going to come screaming and fighting, or He's going to pull your hair and drag you through. <laughs> that's right. I mean, I, that's how it happened to me. I remember Bob Mumford saying one time that it, you know, the Lord showed him uh, his walk from the beginning when he started walking with him. And he said, well, what are those marks on the ground? He said, those are your heel marks where I dragged you. <laughs> Amen. But if it happens, so I mean, 
Just take me in, Jesus. Yeah. Don't let pride, don't let anything come in my heart to keep me from that glorious nature. Amen. I want, and I know you want to be like Jesus. 24 hours a day. It consumes me. Glory to God. We will pray for you, dear brother. But uh, here we have this, this queen, his bride, in gold of Ophir. She has the divine nature of God. So then he continues, Hearken, O daughter, speaking to the bride, and consider. Oh, by the way, let me say this. Gold of Ophir, the word Ophir means reducing to ashes. Jesus. See, when the divine nature comes into our soulish man, it's going to, what does he say to Jeremiah? You're going to, uh, hold on just a second, I can tell you right now, Jeremiah chapter 1, root out, pull down, destroy, then he's going to build and plant. Okay, So he has to root out, pull down, destroy. You know, it's like a wrecking crew comes in there before they begin to build and to plant. So when God's divine nature wants to come in your wicked, wretched soul, he has to get rid of all that which is not pleasing to him. And that takes a lifetime. Don't expect it to happen in three months or two months or even three years or ten years. I mean, I thought when I came into the kingdom, I was so committed in doing everything to walk with him. I thought, well, man, this is, you know, it's going to be short. <laughs> you have no idea. I had no idea, but I do now. Yeah. How far the soul of man has fallen. That's right. There's so many areas that God needs to invade with his divine it's all a process it takes time it takes the dealings of god to work on our soul it takes counsel it takes reading the word of god it takes being in his manifest presence it takes worshiping obeying him all of that is a part of the process of you having the divine nature at some point Hallelujah. but and what happens is it's going to be all of that soulish realm of yours is going to be reduced to ashes because the fire of God, not physical fire, but the spiritual fire of God with the dealings of God are going to burn out all that dross in our soul. Glory to God. So he says, hearken, O daughter, and consider. Now, I've got a bunch of words here that I wrote down. The word for hearken, I just want to go through these to get this to you, means to, because I'm doing it exegesis-wise, and I want to make sure that I uh, follow that pattern. Hearken means to hear intelligently, yeah. if you have the power to hear. Wow. Remember when Jesus said, uh, to him that hath ears, let him hear. Yeah. Well, does that mean every person that has ears is going to be, physical ears is going to be hearing? No, he wasn't talking about your physical ears. He was talking about the ability for you to hear spiritually. Yeah. If any man has the power to hear or the authority to hear, or you've gotten to the point in your life where you hear and hearken, you hear intelligently the voice of God. <coughs> hearken, O daughter, and consider. Now this word for consider simply means to inspect, to regard, or to give attention to. Now, I'm talking to the bride tonight. Hear me. Hear me intelligently. I know that every one of you have an ear to hear what the Spirit is saying. Consider, consider, as Paul said to Timothy, consider what I say, and the Lord give thee understanding. But you've got to pay attention to what? The word of the Lord is. Uh -huh. Hearken, O daughter, and consider. And then notice this word. Incline thine ear. That word for incline means literally to bend away. And it, there's, <clears throat> in the Greek dictionary, there's a parenthesis. It's in parentheses and it says, 
including moral deflections. That's what the emphasis is there. In other words, you're going to incline, you're going to bend yeah, away. Love it, love it. Yes. Hallelujah. All the stuff that's going on in our soul, it's screaming at us constantly. Even right now, I would dare say some of you are being, voices are trying to get in your head, even while I'm talking. Resist the bend away. Yeah, Glory to God. Deflect yeah, that. Jesus. All right. Incline your ear, and this is the point I want to get to tonight. And if I can if I get through this, it'll be a miracle, and then I want to get to the, the Lord desiring us. But what does he say next? Forget also thine own people and thy father's house. Forget means to be oblivious of, to cease to care. Hallelujah. Forget your own people, that means your nationality or your race. Mm -hmm. They're your people. Forget them. So for all black people, that means you have to forget your African American community. I have to forget my Caucasian community. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But even further it goes and it says you have to be oblivious of. You have to cease to care for your father's house. That's your family members. Now, I, in writing the book Black But Comely, uh, black people were so excited about everything I was sharing until I got to the point where I started talking about we don't worship God in a black way or in a white way. We worship the kingdom way. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> so, I mean, uh, everybody that exalts in their culture, please hear me. And I don't want to cause any offense tonight, but I'm just going to tell you what the scripture is saying. You need to be oblivious of and cease to care about your culture. And be ready for the kingdom culture Amen. to come upon you. Yeah, right. Glory to Jesus. Amen. Let's take that a step further. And let's start talking about our family members. How many people? Now see, our dear brothers from Pakistan. He needs to forget his own people in Pakistan. Glory to Jesus. Mm -hmm. Whatever the culture is. Now we know that white people have a culture in worship. Black people have a culture in worship. Uh, I imagine Indian, Pakistani people have culture. Hispanic people have a culture. And they want to stick with their culture. It's such a... And it's becoming more and more harder to separate yourself from your people. Yeah. This is the last... I believe one of the last things that God is requiring of his people. Now, see, I paid a price. I left my family. I left my people. I could have, I could have cared less. And I mean, I gave no, uh, I'm oblivious of what's going on in my family. Not that I don't care. I don't want to. If they call me, I can help them, which I do all the time. I help them with money, finances, whatever. I'll do that. But I'm not controlled. Yeah. by my family. Yeah. They don't have any say-so in my life whatsoever. That's right. My people don't have any say-so. You know, while I was writing that book uh, about black but comely, uh, the history of all the uh, black people in the scriptures, <clears throat> two people came to me that were Caucasian during that time, members of my church, and said to me, why do you hate your own people? Well, what I should have said is, man, do you really think I hate my own people? That's good. Amen. The Bible says to forget your own people. We don't have. We're new creations in Christ Jesus. New creatures. Glory to God. Yeah, so true. We're a, a new, the, in, the, in the Greek that means a new species. Mm -hmm. 
And we're brothers and sisters now. And our color is the glory, the gold, the whatever that, yes. whatever it shows yes. up in. Yep. The gold of the glory of God. That's yes. the color you and I want. Yep. Mm -hmm. That's right. Yes. That's so right. Amen. But how many this, these days are being challenged to forget their own people? And we can't do that because we, if we're listening to the world, if we're listening to what people are saying rather than the Word of God. So true. You yeah. cannot, you know, it's like, I, I didn't want to hear it when somebody came up to me recently or during the last election and said, you know, there are more of us than uh, there are black people. And I'm like, what are you talking about? I don't even relate That's right. to that anymore. Mm -hmm. That's right. And whoever, you know, those brothers, whoever they were, God bless them, but they have no revelation of the kingdom of God and who they are in Jesus. That's right. Yeah. We need to forget. Hear this now, please. And if you haven't done it yet, tonight is your opportunity to be oblivious of, to cease to care about your people. Because listen to me. God's not going to desire you if you don't. Amen. You can't be a bride thinking about other things. Right. You, a man shall leave his father and his mother. Yes. We leave our people, our families, Jesus. to embrace Jesus. the bridegroom. Amen. And if you come in there with, you know, how many times have I seen wives bring all kinds of stuff to the marriage, and you know, you, you know, the the groom never really knows about it, and he finds out over a period of time. You know, we all hide those little things to keep them from our husband or our future husband and wife, and we don't let them know it until after we're married, <laughs> because then they're stuck. <laughs> they have to take us. Don't bring a bunch of garbage to your wedding. <laughs> yeah. Try to be clean and pure in the sense of you've, you've dealt with all that foolishness, selfishness and, you know, insecurity and uh, whatever. We need to forget our own culture. And if we do that, God's going to see it and he's going to desire you. Yes. It, costs, it costs something to walk with Jesus. Right. It does. Mm -hmm. He gives us everything. Amen. Calls us a queen. Calls us the bride. The sons of God. The mighty men. But we, you think you can walk in that without giving up anything? There is no way. If I could pick a husband or a wife for my son and daughter, I'm going to make absolutely certain. We want them to be the best of the best, don't we? Yes. We don't want our children to have to deal with issues, even though they will. I mean, that's just the way life is. Yeah. And we can try as we might to find the perfect person, but there is no perfect person. Yeah. Everybody brings with them a, a set of issues and dealings, mm -hmm. but at least be a disciple of Jesus. Yeah. We have to forget our people. And I believe that God is dealing in the body of Christ right now yeah. with so many racist tendencies in his people. How many times have I heard a white person say, well, I'm not prejudiced. But then you get them alone and get them away from everybody. 
they're just around white people and eventually they'll say something that lets you know there's a little bit of racism still hanging there. Yeah. Black people are the same. I'm not prejudiced. But then when they're with each other, and believe me, I've been there. I was born in the ghetto and was part of a gang and was involved in all of that. So I know what I'm talking about. I virtually became a black boy we have to forget our culture yeah. it is a burden but it see it, it it's put to us like this how can you forget your people how there's only one way to do it it's by all those places in your soul that are filled up by uh, uh, soulish thinking and uh, political thinking and uh, thinking about who's done what to you and what's wrong with uh, you, you know, why you're not accepted or et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. You have to, all of that has to be divinely broken up yeah. out of your soulish realm. That's right. Mm. Forget also thine own people and this one. Jesus, and thy father's house. You see, most people think that uh, we need to put our wives uh, and our family before everything else. And frankly, it's just not the truth. I'm sorry, but your wife, your husband is to be the second on the list. Yeah, that's right. You say, well, Brother Sam, that sounds pretty. Let me read to you a passage in Micah, chapter 7, verse 5. Just look at it later, but I'm going to read it to you right now, just so you hear this. Micah, chapter 7, and verse 5. It says here, Trust ye not in a friend, Put you not confidence in a guide. Keep the doors of thy mouth from her that lieth in thy bosom. Mm, mm, mm. Glory to God. Yeah. For the son dishonoreth the father. The daughter rises up against her mother. The daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law. A man's enemies are the men of his own house. Mm. Or basically are the people in his own house. Or your family members. He goes on to say, Therefore, because of this, I will look unto the Lord. I will wait for the God of my salvation. My God will hear me. Glory to Jesus. Now let me just take you to some passages in the scriptures. Matthew chapter 12. Matthew 12, and you might want to really, you know, write these down because, and just put in, like in your Bible or in your notes, uh, family members and where they belong in the kingdom. Okay, Matthew 12, and let's see. Matthew 12, oh, I'm in Matthew 13, I'm sorry. Matthew 12, 46, okay. While... Jesus talked to the people. Behold, his brother, his mother and his brothers stood without desiring to speak with him. Now, in other words, Mary and his other brothers uh, came up and tried to interrupt Jesus when he was preaching or talking to the people. Because they thought, well, surely we're his family members. We have a right to do that. Well, let's look what happened. Then one said unto him, Behold, thy mother and thy brother stand outside or without, desiring to speak with you. And this is the truth. 
But he answered and said unto him that told him, Who is my mother? Yeah, can you imagine Mary's heart right there? Yeah. <clears throat> who is my mother and who are my brethren? Glory to Jesus. Who is your mother and who are your brethren? Not your natural mother and father. Not your natural brothers and sisters. Now we respect that. I'm not telling you to stop loving your family or anything like that. <clears throat> I'm telling you the order in which it needs to be in. And I have found in my ministry of 51 years that most family members will try to interrupt, to interfere with what you're doing in Jesus. And you have to have that thing already settled in your spirit. Amen. Who is my mother and who are my brothers? And look what Jesus did. And he stretched forth his hands toward his disciples and said, Behold, my mother and my brethren. Yes. So in other words, the people in the kingdom of God have now replaced Amen. your personal family members. Yes. Now, I don't know how uh, you're going to receive that or even if you're open to receiving that. All men cannot receive this same. But the kingdom of God is more important in our lives even than our own family. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's right. Amen. 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 You just wait. How many times have I uh, had to just deal with people and tell, warn them, you know, your mother's not going to want you to do that or your father's not going to agree with that or your husband won't like that or your wife won't like that we don't now ladies we're all we're and men we're all under authority there is no male or female anymore we're all under authority but in the house in in a family structure the christian man is the head of the household if he's a Christian, he's the head of the household. If he's not, it's up for grabs. You know what I'm saying? Whatever demons work in anybody will control that place. But if there's a godly woman, then she's the head of that household. Amen. But, you know, as a rule, if they're walking with the Lord and they're going on with the Lord, the husband is the head of the house. All right. But how many times have I seen God bring a... moat between husbands and wives, parents and children, and children and parents. Uh, I remember one time way back in the early 70s, this sister that was totally strung out on drugs, we brought her in, got her saved, and she was wonderfully, gloriously saved. If she hadn't gotten saved, she was an addict, she would have died. And, uh, you know, we prayed for her, she got saved, then she got filled with the Holy Ghost, wonderfully speaking in tongues, and... Uh, she was there in every meeting. We had meetings morning and night during those days. And she was there all the time. And then after a couple of weeks, she disappeared. And so we said, well, we got to find this girl and find out what's happening to her. We even went to her house. And her mother answered the door and said to us, I would rather my daughter be on drugs, be a drug addict, than speaking in tongues, and with you, Jesus freaks. Mm. Wow. Mm. Mm. That girl never came back. Mm. Mm. Yeah, well. Who prevented that girl from going on with God? Her mother, Her mother did. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. How many fathers you've told your father, well, you know, you wanted me to become an attorney, or you wanted me to go into law or medicine or whatever. But I feel the call of God on my life. I'm going to give myself to Jesus. They go, what? We sent you to college? We're willing to pay for you to go to school? And you're not going to honor that? When it comes to the kingdom of God, 
Yeah. Hear me. Exactly. We honor our parents. We honor our father and mother. So our days can be long upon this earth. But when our father and mother interrupts the kingdom of God, guess where they go? Yeah, that's Oblivion. Yes. <laughs> we are oblivious of our family members. Now, I don't want any husbands to think well, you're supposed to be oblivious of taking care of your family. Or you, you know, anybody that's a provider. You know, God expects that of us. But in doing that, don't take upon yourself pressure from family members. Yeah. See, Jesus' family here, his mother, who knew better? But Jesus' brothers were not born again. And they thought he was crazy. And so they convinced Mary, go in and interrupt that guy. Go interrupt him what he's doing. Jesus would have none of it. He let her know. And he let his brothers know. My family are the disciples. Them, rather them that hear the word of God and keep it. If your father doesn't hear the word of God and keep it, you need to stop listening to your father. If you're of age and can leave the household. If your mother doesn't hear the word of God and keep it, you need to stop listening to your mother. If they don't like the Holy Ghost or you speaking in tongues, then you just need to be oblivious of them. Don't let them speak into your life. Because they're bringing a demonic interference between you and Jesus. All right. But what does he say there? For whosoever shall do the will of my Father which is in heaven, the same. Whoever's doing the will of the Father, the same is my brother and sister and mother. If people in your family are not walking with Jesus, or they're just barely walking with the Lord, but they're not really seeking the will of the Father, then you need to cease to care about them. Pray for them, believe God for them, but don't let it control your life. Amen. All right, turn to uh, Matthew chapter 10. Matthew 10. <clears throat> Let's start this in uh, verse 34. Think not that I am come to send peace on the earth. I came not to send peace, but a sword. For I am come to set a man at variance or in conflict. Amen. In conflict against his father and the daughter against her mother and the daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law. And a man's foes or enemies shall be they of his own household. If you're not, I'm not saying this. This is not some new doctrine. This is the New Testament I'm reading to you. Look at this next verse because it says everything that I've tried to live my life. He that loveth father or mother more than me is not worthy of me. And he that loveth son or daughter or you could say, wife or husband, more than me, is not worthy of me. Amen. And he that taketh not up his cross and followeth after me is not worthy of me. He that findeth his life shall lose it. And he that loseth his life for my sake shall find it. Yes. That's talking about your suke, your soulish life. We have to lose that soulish life. Amen. And our family members have no say when they're not seeking the will of the Father. Amen. Jesus says right there, if you listen to them, you're not worthy of me. Amen. Glory to he that loveth father or mother more than me is not worthy of me. Amen. And if you love your children, I have five. Please listen to me. 
If you love your children more than Jesus, you are not worthy of him. Is God just trying to do something uh, to make it hard for us? No. He knows the pull and the, uh, the dealings and the frustration of trying to deal with parents or children or with a wife or a husband. Don't be in bondage to any of them. Let Jesus be the Lord of your life. Amen. Amen. Let Him be the husband of your life. Amen. And the other people in the kingdom, the, those that are true disciples, let them be your brother and your sister. Hallelujah. Glory to yes. Jesus. Glory. It's so simple, isn't it? Yeah. My goodness. Okay. Let's, uh, let's turn to Luke 14. I'm just trying to give you these passages where Jesus was very plain about where the family fits in the kingdom of God and our response to them. Oh my, you're not going to like this. Verse 25, I can tell you right now, you're not going to like this. And there went great multitudes with him, and he turned and said unto them, If any man come to me, have you come to Jesus? I think you have. And hate not. Now God's not saying hate. This is all about putting things in perspective. Okay? Not allowing them to, to be first or to be a torment in your life. If any man come to me and hate not his father and mother and wife and children and brethren and sisters, yea, and his own life also, he cannot be my disciple. If we put anything, mother, father, wife, children, brothers, sisters, even our own life, if we put anything before Jesus, it's wrong. You're out of order. You cannot be my disciple. Because a disciple means a disciplined one. A student. Somebody that's going to hear and obey. How many times have you been caught with your family members? How many times have your brothers and sisters disagreed with you? And some people even get involved where they, mothers and fathers try to keep their children from going on with God. Brothers and sisters, I remember when I got saved and I was going to move to Jacksonville, Florida in 1970, was it 71, 72? And I was going to go move in a house with a, a man that I just had heard about through a woman who was one of my teachers in my school. And when I told my family what I was doing, that I was going to leave the day after I graduated, they thought I was nuts. Yeah, I bet. Now, my brother is five years older than me and I mean, you know, he played five instruments and he was always an honor roll student and, you know, always the one that got all these awards. And, you know, so I, in a sense, in the natural, my soul kind of, you know, worshipped him or put him on a pedestal anyway. But when I came to Jesus, all of that was busted. Mm -hmm. Jesus was on the pedestal of my life. Yes. And I remember the bus pulling away at 4.30 in the morning in Washington, D.C. And my brother had written me a poem about what I was doing. And I was reading it as the bus pulled away and looking at him, wondering when I would ever see him again. It would be years before I'd see him. Telling me in that poem how... Could I do that? How wrong it was to leave. But something deep in my soul, in my spirit, said if you stay here, you are going to backslide and you will never have the walk with God that you'll, all my family members told me not to do it that I was crazy to do it. So I had 
to be oblivious of their... I have four sisters and a brother and a mother. My parents are dead, but I mean, and one of my sisters is, but I mean, I had five women and one man basically telling me they were the, all the people that I had at that time as far as my friends. You know, I had separated from them when I came to Jesus, and so I didn't really have that many friends, except Christian friends. Uh, but my family members, we had been through hell together. I walked with my sisters through my father, raping them, and uh, my brother getting beat up, and you just, you name it. My mother, we're trying to protect my mother, but I had to walk away from it because I knew that the call of God on my life, I'm talking to you right now tonight because of what I did 51 years ago. Oh, that's so right. yeah. Amen. And I was weeping, tears streaming down my face as that bus was pulling away. Everything in me screaming at me, you are crazy to do this. There's your family. They love you. Yeah, they loved me. But when I told them I wanted to walk with Jesus and that I had turned from being a bad person or an ungodly person into trying to be good, they judged me critically. That's crazy. I don't know how many of you have that soul tie with your mother or your father or your yeah. brothers. How many people have been abused by their mother and father, but still have a soul tie with them. Mm -hmm. Still allow them to torment their lives. Mm -hmm. Every time my, my sisters and I get together, they always want to talk about my, we call my father daddy. And they always want to say, do you remember when daddy did? No, I don't remember. Well, don't you remember when daddy did this? No, I don't. I'm oblivious. Of all of that, I ceased to care about that when I left. And I'm better off for it because I had enough to deal with in my, my personal soul. There was more than enough for me to have to deal with and contend with. Let alone having to deal with those outside issues. Ah, I... I believe the Lord spoke to me today and said that he was going to be dealing with some of you about this very thing. Now, we know that in other cultures and other, you know, in India, uh, dear brother Philip is there now. And then we've got that brother from Pakistan watching us. Uh, we know that those cultures are different and people stay with their families and all of that. Uh, I know in Bolivia or in South America, a daughter stays with her parents until she gets married. But if you're a believer, what if you're a believer, my dear brother, in Pakistan? The people there, most of them are Muslim. They don't receive you, do they? You have to pay a price every day. What if your parents are not born again? And you come out saying, well, I'm walking with Jesus. There's a price to be paid for walking with yeah. Jesus. Yes. Yeah. Glory to God. And so many of us have, you know, we've been saved so long, we've forgotten what that price is now. I remember back in the old days when I first started speaking in tongues, how many people came against me for doing it. Now it's, you know, you have worldly people pretending they're speaking in tongues. Hmm. comedians on television faking it not when I got filled with the Holy Ghost Jesus, no. we've forgotten the price but see now the price is being paid in all kinds of different ways and God is going to make sure that his remnant my dove my undefiled is but one she is the choice one of her that bear her. Glory to Jesus. Yeah. I don't know about you, but I want to be that choice one. Look at Luke chapter 12 and verse 51. Real quick. I'm going to finish here pretty soon. Suppose ye that I am come 
to give peace on earth. I tell you no, but rather division. In another place he says, I bring a sword. For from henceforth there shall be five in one house divided, three against two and two against three. The father shall be divided against the son and the son against the father, the mother against the daughter, the daughter against the mother, the mother-in-law against her daughter-in-law, the daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law. Jesus is the word, the sword that separates families. Jesus is the sword or the division in families. But it would be so easy if when we come to the Lord, we're taught these principles. Taught. You've got to leave behind your family. And you have to embrace the kingdom of God. You need to forget your own nationality and your culture. I'm proud to be an American. I, my heart gets, uh, you know, I become teary-eyed every time I sing the Star Spangled Banner. I love this country. But I'm not bound to it. I don't really care. To be honest with you, I submit myself to the kingdom of God and the king of that kingdom is King Jesus. Amen. He is Amen. sovereign. He is working in the earth and I don't really care what my country is doing. I'm going to pray for my country. I'm going to care about my country. I'm not going to let it consume me though. Yeah, that's right. Because it's going to steal my intimacy yes. with God. Yes. You cannot be my disciple if you don't. Do these things. Last scripture, look at Luke 14 again. Glory to Jesus. Oh my. Luke 14 and verse 16. Well, let's start in verse 15. And when one of them that sat at meat with him heard these things, he said unto him, Blessed is he that shall eat bread in the kingdom of God. Then said he unto him, A certain man made a great supper and bade many or invited many. Now, this is the great supper, the supper of the Lamb, the marriage supper of the Lamb. And he sent his servants at supper time to say to them that were bidden, come for all things are now ready. And they all with one consent began to what? Make excuse. Amen. Every one of them. The first said unto him, I have bought a piece of ground and I must needs go and see it. I pray thee have me excused. That's possessions. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. That's allowing things like property and so on to get a hold of you. Yeah. And another said, I have bought five yoke of oxen, and I go to prove them. I pray thee, have me excused. Well, obviously that was his job, wasn't it? Yeah. How many people have used their job for an excuse for the kingdom? And another said, I have married a wife. He didn't even try to say what's going to happen. He just said, therefore, I cannot come. <laughs> At least the other said, please have me excused. He, you know, this brother is like, hey, forget it. I'm not, I'm not coming anyway. Because I have to answer to that woman. <laughs> You'd be surprised how many women are in control of their men. Just as many as men that control their wives. And I always tell the sisters, listen. If you have a walk with God and your husband doesn't want you to do it, what you say is you just do everything, clean his house, clean the house. If you're working, work, whatever, fix the food. But when it comes time to give yourself to Jesus, do it. Yeah. Give yourself to Jesus yeah. and not to your husband. Yes. Yeah. Glory to God. Years ago, there was a dear brother that uh, wanted to be dating and wanted to be married so bad. 
but he, he this this gorgeous, absolutely beautiful, stunning uh, girl started coming to the meetings uh, in those early days, and you know everybody wanted to you know get next to her because she was just so pretty or whatever. But you know he was a pretty good looking guy himself, so he went out and started dating her. But come to find out, uh, she really was not, and all of us had a witness. And he thought we were just jealous of him when we would say stuff to him. Uh, I don't know about that girl. And you dating her or whatever. Getting married. He was going to get married to her after a short uh, time. And as soon as they got married, the day after they got married, she stopped speaking in tongues. Said, I will never do that again. And began to torment him. He stopped coming to the meetings, stopped being a part of the things of God. And then it was 25 years later. Guess who comes walking into him? Now I'm the assistant pastor at the church in the beach. And uh, he comes walking into my office 25 years later saying, I can't take it anymore. I married the most beautiful woman physically in the world only to find out that her soul was corrupt. Mm -hmm. She used me and has abused me for years and I want to get a divorce from her now. And so I told him, I made it hard on him. You need to give it a year and just try your best to make it work. Didn't happen a year later. She came to him. She was committing adultery with uh, people all the time and uh, flaunting herself to others. And, and so uh, then she wanted the divorce. And so it was fine. But then after he got the divorce, I told him, you're going to have to wait a year before you can date again. Back when pastors had say in people's lives. <laughs> but you know what? The, 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 the end of that next year, the, the, the day that it ended, I had a party at my house and I invited the girl that I knew was his wife to that party, a single woman. By then they're all in their mid-30s or whatever. And uh, before that night was over, he and that young lady were sitting together talking to each other and I had the privilege of marrying them six months later and they've been happily married ever since. Awesome. But he gave himself for what he could see, the sight of the eyes. That's the flesh. That's the world. Well, did I tell you to turn? Did I start reading it or not? Verse 20, I've married a wife. Oh, yeah, okay. So, uh, so that servant came and showed his Lord all these things. Then the master of the house, being angry, said to his servant, Go out quickly. Because all of those who should have come in yeah. did not. Mm -hmm. They should have come in. We're talking about the queens, the virgins, the concubines, the daughters. Go out quickly into the streets and lanes of the city and bring in hither the poor, the maimed, the halt, and the blind. And all of that has great spiritual meaning, but I'm not going to go through it now. And the servant said, Lord, it is done. And he says, yet there is room. Then he tells him, go into the highways and the byways and compel them to come in. For I say unto you, verse 24, that none of those men which were bidden shall taste of my supper. Glory to God. So forget also thine own people and thy father's house. Yeah. I don't know if I could be any clearer in the scriptures. It's just absolutely so true. I don't know how anybody could deny that and say, you need to think about your culture, the culture of your people. No, you do not. You need to be thinking about the kingdom of God Amen. and the culture of the kingdom. Your people have now become your brothers and sisters in Jesus. That's right. Glory to God. All right. Well, 
I know that maybe for some of you this was a hard thing to hear, but I want to pray for our dear brother in Pakistan right now and his people and pray for our dear brother in India. Thank you, Father, for just touching their countries right now. Yes. Deliver them of that cruel disease called COVID-19. Lord, just thank you for a vaccination. Thank you for just peace reigning in those countries and you becoming Lord of those countries. You're the sovereign God. You see everything. And I pray for healing, peace, and deliverance to come to Pakistan, Bolivia, India, Brazil, every nation that the devil has sought to take over. Surely, Lord God, healing is the children's bread. Your people, you promise us no plague shall come nigh our dwelling. So be it, Father. Thank you, Father God. Thank you, Father God. Oh, my dear brother and sister, I love you so much. I'll be trying to finish this Friday evening, but just know that uh, next week I'm going to be going to Jacksonville and I'll be holding the meetings in Jacksonville, Florida. But, uh, you know, my wife and I are trying to buy a house and uh, we're just, we have until a certain amount of time to come up with a, down payment and we're just really believing God. I have never in any of my ministry sought to buy a house. Never once. Because I always wanted to be able to move when the Lord said go. But now at the age of 66 and my family all having grown, uh, we need to have a place for our family to come back to and my wife certainly needs a home as I go to fulfill the will of God with the rest of my life. I ask you just to be praying about that with me and if God speaks to you to sow a seed, that would be so welcome. Uh, But anyway, I pray that you receive this word knowing it came from somebody who's lived it, who's walked in it and overcome his own people and his own family. I pray that God gives you the grace to do that in Jesus' name. Amen. A few quick things before we close today. First of all, thank you so much for joining us. It means everything to us that God's glory and his word is ministered to you. Please like and subscribe, as well as we'd love to hear from you as well at office at nwmin.org. You can email us. Lastly, check out our website, nwmin.org. We have just so many resources, Bible studies, e-courses, things like that. We just want to make disciples of the nations. Jesus himself said in John 8, if you continue in my word, then are you my disciples indeed, and you shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. Making God's people free, hallelujah, is the goal as we share this word. To that end, has this video been produced? Lastly, if this video is ministered to you spiritually, pray about sowing a seed to this humble ministry. You can do that online at nwmin.org slash donate. Thanks again. Jesus truly is precious. Bye for now.